In this chapter, we're going to look at gases in a little bit more detail. Two things we'll look at. We'll look a little bit more about their properties and characteristics, but we'll focus a little bit more time on their calculations and measurements. So the first thing we got to talk about is, in terms of measuring gases, is what is their pressure? Now, definition of pressure, we can talk about this in terms of uh, even a physics concept. Pressure is simply the amount of force that we apply uh, per unit of area. Uh, so we talk about pounds per square inch, things like that. And so these are uh, the different pressure units that uh, you probably come into contact with. Some of them you already know, others you don't. Uh, we'll probably just this list, we'll kind of narrow it down to just a couple. Uh, we'll definitely use ATMs chemistry, we'll use millimeters of mercury, and we'll use pascals. Uh, the other one's not so much uh, PSIs, pounds per square inch. You've uh, dealing with car tires, blowing up footballs, basketballs, things like that. Inches of mercury, uh, you use in weather. Tor and bar are kind of older units uh, used in science, weather, meteorology, and a few other cases. So, And, and there are more. But these are the ones that uh, you probably see the most often, with a couple of them focusing on specifically for chemistry. Now, how do we measure pressure, and how do they figure this out? Well, what is there's a, a scientist that was sort of credited with this, Torricelli. And if you notice, there was one of the units called the Tor. He was credited with a lot of uh, experimentation and things like that dealing with pressure. Basically, here's what he discovered. You discover if you have a pan of mercury in which, in a glass tube, uh, mercury is filled in this tube, you realized over time that the level of mercury within the tube would rise and lower, and that he would be able to make measurements. And what he realized is there must be something in the atmosphere that is pushing down on this mercury. And from that, they were able to uh, again, calibrate this tube and then again, make some measurements. She basically said, all right, there's something in the atmosphere. There's gases in the atmosphere that are changing. And what do we mean by changing? Well, the density of those gases, how many gases are there are, how compact they are, uh, and how much force they're applying down onto this mercury um, is, is changing. So uh, we try to do a lot with making those measurements, uh, trying to do some predict predictions, things related to that. All right, so we talk about barometric pressure. Uh, let's just take a look here. Uh, we'll go to weather.com, see what we can find out here. This would be the uh, most recent data, and we'll do a right now test. So right now, as you can see here, we've got uh, 29.93 inches is the pressure and we have a side arrow it's holding steady so 29.93 inches is the atmospheric pressure currently in Medina now we talk about atmospheric pressure so again most of it is right around 29 inches so what is okay that's great that's in inches but how do we make other measurements well what we want to be able to do is we got to be able to convert between pressure units depending upon what we're given and what we're asked to solve for. So on page 364, there's a, there's a chart that is showing all the different pressure units. So we've got to be able to convert between atmospheres to tor, or atmospheres to inches, millimeters to tor, and back and forth. All the different possibilities, uh, even PSI, uh, Pascal, so a lot of different ones. We've got to be able to convert back and forth to. So if you notice on page 364, there's a chart, and actually I can simplify it a little bit. In the chart on 364, they give some definitions, but it simplifies to say that all of these pressure units are all equal to each other. 1 atm equals 760 millimeters. 101 kPa equals 14.7 psi. 1.013 bar equals this. So they're all equal to each other. Now, what you uh, aren't necessarily used to is you're always thinking, well, something's to one, you know, and a lot of it's been one mole. Well, 
in these conversion factors, there's only one thing that is 1, and that's ATMs. So you actually are going to have conversion factors where it might be 760 over 101, or vice versa. So you just got to get used to that. One of the things uh, that they have in the book, a couple things you can quickly look at. Um, you have on page 365, there's a sample problem A, and there's a practice problem number one. Uh, you should be able to follow through those and figure out uh, what the answers to those two questions are. Pretty simple conversion factor. You're going to get this chart, okay? So the chart's going to be given. You just need to be able to use it correctly. Right. So after you've done those two, here are two show me's I want you to do. Okay. And once you have these in your notes and you've done this, uh, to be able to show me your calculations, just to make sure that you're on the right track. Last thing here, just about some calculations and measurements. If you ever see the phrase standard uh, temperature and pressure, or STP for short, it is specifically referencing a temperature of 0 Celsius and 1 atmosphere of pressure. So instead of actually saying 0 degrees Celsius in the question or saying 1 atmosphere of pressure, they're just going to say the conditions are at STP. And then obviously here, standard temperature would be just 0 Celsius. Standard pressure would just be 1 atm, or obviously the equivalent unit um, if we're talking about PSI and things like that. Last thing I'll just say here, 1 atm, uh, that's what we basically consider normal um, air pressure. And again, we're basically going to say, well, that's what we have at sea level. Okay. So again, just a little reference point there that we can use. All right, so moving on to the next thing here. It's always a topic that comes up. What's what's humidity? What's air pressure? And you hear about the barometer and the barometric pressure. How, what is all that stuff? Here's something that's kind of interesting, and, and people sort of get this backwards a little bit. If there's water in the air, okay, water vapor, steam, things like that, we actually think of it as humidity. Okay? That's what humidity is. It's water vapor in the air. Here's where people don't realize what that really means. If there is a lot of water vapor in the air, the air actually becomes lighter or less dense. And if it becomes lighter or less dense, there is less pressure. Now, people say, wait a second, but water, it's heavy and things like that. It actually isn't. Compare the molar masses of water to nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. And it's actually a lot less. The molar mass of oxygen is 18, of nitrogen it's 28, carbon dioxide it's 44, and of oxygen it's 32. So actually putting more water in the air lowers that density. So if it lowers that density, there's less pressure. So what does that mean? It does not push down as hard on the mercury. What does that mean? The barometer's reading is lower. So if we go to a nice little simple map, and we want to make some comparisons here. We see low pressures in a couple spots here. Well, on a map, what do we know low pressure is? A red L. Red L means storm or precipitation, rain or snow. If we see, again, this case, just for this map's purposes, big blue H's, that mean is high pressure. It is dry, no precipitation. So what do we mean when something has high pressure and it's dry? It's high pressure, that means it's very dense. Therefore, there's more pressure. So there is the absence of water vapor. Okay? Kind of makes sense. Low pressure, storms coming. High pressures, dry. Doesn't necessarily mean warm, just means dry. So we can see here those high pressure uh, fronts. Okay. So it's a good comparison to under understand the difference between the two. 
All right, so the last thing dealing with gas mixtures is what we call partial pressure. And this is how we can measure each of the individual gases. So if there's several substances involved, all the pressures are important. And actually, it's simply an additive property. The pressure of the total, okay, the total pressure of the mixture is simply the sum of all the individual pressures. If we have four gases, the pressure is the total of all four of them put together. Where does this become important? It becomes important when we talk about water displacement labs. And these will be labs that we'll be doing this chapter. When we're doing some of these water displacement labs, there's water present, and hence the term water displacement. When there's water present, it also has pressure, and that pressure affects the gases. So here's what we need to think about, is if we want to find the, the pressure of a particular gas, we need to subtract away the pressure of the water or any other gases that are present. So if the total pressure is equal to the pressure of the gas plus the pressure of the water plus the pressure of others, the pressure of the gas that is in question, the one we want to solve for, is simply the total pressure minus water's pressure. Why do we want to do that? Well, we might want to know something specific about a gas. What is the gap pressure of just the gas? What's the volume of the gas? What's the temperature of the gas? And even ultimately, what's the moles or mass of gas that's present? We don't want to know the total. We just want to know the one particular gas. We want to se separate away everything else. Now, here's the problem. The pressure of water changes. It is dependent on temperature. Okay. Temperature goes up, water pressure goes up. Temperature goes down, water pressure goes down. So there's an appendix on page 859, and obviously uh, the chart will be given to you on the test. You just need to take into consideration, all right, this is the temperature, therefore this is the pressure of the water, and you apply it to the situation. Here's a simple problem in the book. Uh, they tell us the total pressure of a gas mixture of water and oxygen is 731 torr, and it's, the mixture is at 20 degrees Celsius. They want to know the pressure of just the oxygen. So what do we do? We take the total pressure, we subtract away the pressure supplied by the water. You look up in the appendix or on the chart, what is the pressure of water at 20 degrees Celsius? 17.5 torr. Therefore, the pressure of just the oxygen alone is 731 minus 17.5. Okay. So if we actually look at this, what do we have? We have 713.5 torr is the pressure of just the oxygen. Okay. And that's all we're trying to look at. If that's the pressure of the oxygen, then we will be able to go on and do other things. And we, like I said, I mentioned this before, we will be using this in future labs, uh, especially when we're producing oxygen and hydrogen gas. Last thing I'll have you do, kind of one show me here. Uh, on page... Uh, what is it, 366 maybe? Uh, I forget what that page is. Uh, this practice problem number one on the um, partial pressures. So you can uh, work on that one, show me that practice problem, and um, that should be it for this first section.